Mm. Welcome to practice. Welcome to life's work yoga and breathe, move, rest. As promised, we'll begin with a few minutes of breathing, move on to about 15 to 20 minutes of moving and conclude with some grounding, restoring postures, finally culminating in a savasana to then close our practice and resume our day. Thanks so much for being here. Please adapt to what you need more or less. Skip things, add in things, meet yourself where you're at and listen to that inner wisdom. I'm here to hold the space and to support you in your journey of yoga living, of living well and living intimately with inspiration and to prana, our life force energy. Welcome. Establishing a posture that is comfortable, sustainable, with ease. Start to direct your attention to the flow of breath in and out. And just noticing perhaps where the breath is flowing in the nose, out the mouth, both in and out the mouth, just notice. No need to worry about why this is happening. Just notice if it's happening. And then in that noticing, you can choose to perhaps play with changing the breath flow. The first order of change might be to direct the breath in and out through the nose or just in through the nose and out through the mouth for some vocalizing, sighing exhales to help facilitate a grounding, a landing, an arriving. Samavriti, <sighs> even breath, meaning an even count or time in and an even count or time out, maintaining a steady pace. For me, that's about a four or a five count. I'm looking personally and based on the science, I'm looking to get to about a five and a half second inhale, followed by a five and a half or six second exhale. And this is lovingly known as the pace of prayer or the pace of healing and restoring to align the pace of our breath, the beat of our heart, the pulse of our blood, and bring us into alignment on an energetic physical level.
Release the breath control and let your breath find its way back to a natural ease. It won't be necessarily the same way you were breathing to begin, but no need to try to control. And circle the nose. Start small and slow, easing that circle to expand, but keeping that circle full and round. Oftentimes as we expand the diameter, we end up with more of a flat tire approach to our circle. Pause and come back to steady. Let any lingering echo of that move, movement dissipate and then begin again in the opposite direction. Where is your pace? Are you feeling sluggish? Maybe add a little intention of increasing that pace. If you're feeling a little buzzy, then intentionally slow it down. But meet yourself in the middle. Meet yourself where you're at and don't strive too much just yet. So we move into the shoulder circles. Again, as if I was drawing a circle on the opposite wall on either side of the room, just by lifting, rolling back, releasing down, curving forward, lifting, rolling back and down. Again, finding a circle that increases with repetition, a natural expansion as we lubricate this connective tissue of the shoulders, the chest, and even up into the neck. Good, now let's circle the elbows. And in circling the elbows, we're gonna bring them in front, over, maybe they come back a bit and down, right? So again, maybe start small, right? Start small, put the elbows in front, and then see about expanding across the chest, up, over, and out as your shoulder and your pectoral, your chest muscles allow. Good. Similarly, we're going to move into an IYWT, an acronym that I like to reframe as in yoga, we trust. In other words, the practice will guide us no matter what our circumstances. So the I, the thumbs lead and the arms come up on either side of the head. And then we swivel open to make this V or U in yoga. Come down to the elbows to a W, we out to a T, extend the arms, trust. And how do we do that? We do that with the practice of love for ourselves and open, opposite arm crisscrosses. And now with compassion for others, we show up in encouragement, give yourself a high five and come on back down and we begin again, planting for grounding and open up. I know it's kind of hokey. So be it. Inhale, arms rise in. Yoga. We trust with self care and love. With community, compassion, and connection. We're encouraged. Yay, high five! to ground, restore, and begin again. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Maybe inhale. And exhale. It's finding a breath pattern that works for you. Ah. Oh. High five. Maybe roll the shoulders, bind the hands, lift the heart. And if your sit allows, go ahead and bow forward, dropping the head to a block or the earth as the arms reach up. Good. 
Good, release the hands, bring them underneath the shoulders and a little bit of a side to side sway. Now, if your hands don't reach the floor, then bring blocks underneath your hands. Bring the floor up to you. And with those hands rooted on the blocks of the floor, start to turn the fingers out, more like a sway from side to side, and then turn them again, pointing them back towards the body. This is enough, or you can even walk those hands closer together and farther in front to bring even more stretch into the inside of your forearm. Again, the majority of my weight is still in my lower body, so as to not be weight bearing, completely while stretching these very busy working muscles of the forearm, the wrist, and the hands. Now you may be able to just lift up off of your hands by using your core muscles, or you might take your baby steps to unwind and rise up to circle and release the tension of the wrists, maybe just here. Maybe intertwine the fingers and figure eight or roll from one side to the other. All right, bring the hands together, reach up in opposite directions. Look down for grounding, look up for inspiration, come back to center and expand. Moving into the spine while combining the shoulder and even the neck rotation. Right? Feel into what feels good for you. Hand can caress on the floor. Again, if your seat has you higher. If you happen to be in a chair, maybe you hold the side of your chair. Or maybe you hold the top of your hip using that leverage of the hooked arm to help protect you from overreaching. Whether the arm goes up or it starts to curve more laterally, we're just looking to open up that side body from the ear to the top of the shoulder, from the shoulder down to the top of the hip. Good. All right, when that's done, go ahead and come back to some shoulders and neck. Just notice what you're feeling. I'm gonna hold my shoulders up and massage the upper tissue of my shoulder blades with the back of my head, just giving a little bit of love to that levator scapula, the posterior scalenes, the trapezius, and the erector muscles. Even the latissimus dorsi comes in here at the top of the shoulder blades, the base of the skull. And then dropping the head forward, perhaps you make some half circles with the top of the head, rolling over to the side of the ear towards the shoulder, and back. If your legs are crisscrossed, right, in a sukhasana, you might like to reverse them. We're not going to be here much longer, but please don't sustain anything that's uncomfortable. Now extend the arms out to the side with the palms facing up. As one arm folds in, we're going to swivel, tilt, and beam the head. So the ear and the chin kind of together find just the right amount of stretch. While we stretch one side, we're slackening the other, kind of pulling down the hand up and over and we switch. This is called a spinal flossing technique and it's specifically targeting the area of the shoulders and the neck. So while swiveling my forearm down and then up, and rolling my head, perhaps with a little bit of a nose circling up and then down, I get a tilt, a swivel, and a bit of a turn all at the same time as I move my arm and my head in tandem. Good, two more times each side. And then both hands come behind the head, holding the weight of the head, spread the elbows, lift the heart, 
but keep those ribs knitted as if not puffing forward to exaggerate that low back bend, but really keep those ribs knitted to the top of the hips and open the heart. Oh, good. One more breath here. Good. Use the hands to help lift the head back up, right? Hands to legs or the floor if you want to move right into table pose. Coming now into our cat and cow for the full length of your spine. So yes, we've got the cervical spine, the neck spine that we've already warmed up. But now we're moving into the mid and the lower back as well. So depending on how much movement you have in that waist and the pelvic tilt will determine how much movement you might facilitate in the bum sliding forward and back. Movement's not necessary, it just depends on how much space you have. But the more movement we find, the more lubrication we bring in. I'm gonna wrap my arms and peel them open and wrap my arms and peel them open. Again, I can't do this if I move right into my hands and knees of table. So choose for yourself. And then I'm gonna transition into my table. Few more cats and cows. By changing my relationship with gravity, I'm also changing my relationship with effort. So coming back into the hands and knees for your table, maybe you want to start to move the lower body, right? Just allowing the hips to sway from side to side. The hip sway might move into more of a hip dip. Right? Down and around. For some of you, you might feel this in the outside of your buttocks. Others, you might feel this in the low back, the lumbar spine. And still others might feel it in the side body above the hip, inching up towards the ribs. It's really a matter of the angle that your body makes and where you hold tension or stuckness. Taking a few more circles of the hips maybe even extending the arms and taking a full rotation a few times in one direction. And then of course, looking to see if we can reverse that direction. And notice how that feels in your body, how your breath might shift with this opposite entrance and exit to the movement. And then a child's pose. Maybe the knees spread wide, maybe the toes come together. And I invite you to crisscross your arms. And if they don't reach the floor, that's okay. You can rest them on a pillow or on a block, or even rest the head to make this accessible with a bit of ease. With the knees wide, we're closing the SI joint, giving a little bit of space to slacken. With the elbows crisscrossed, we're spreading the space between the shoulder blades. Can you feel that dichotomy between the SI joint of the pelvis, the pelvic girdle, and the space between the shoulder blades, the shoulder girdle? As you release, lean to one side and use your weight into the forearm to untangle your arms. Then with support of the hands, bring the knees narrow and the ankles wide. Sink the hips as close as you can and use your arms, perhaps even a little wider, great place for a pillow or a block, to hug those shoulders in and feel the traction across your SI joint. You might even feel some compression 
in the inner thigh or the front thigh, given that we've internally rotated that thigh bone. Take three more breaths. Let's floss the spine, bring the hands back in and under. Use the support of your arms to lift out of that precarious fold. Untangle or straighten out the knees and the shins, extend the arms, and then drop the hips forward as the chin tucks to the chest, tugging that spinal cord north. As your hips slide back, lift the chin up, pulling that spinal cord south. Good, moving from the spinal flossing into more of a muscular stretch. Let the hips drop forward, but the heart lift up and the chin reach up. Maybe the feet fold in. Now taking that in the other direction, lower the shins, drop the hips back. This might be enough, or you might wrap the arms wrap and bind with the lower body, gently rest the top of the head on the floor and curve by lifting the hips up into rabbit pose. Three breaths. As you release one more time, bring your hands forward, let your hips rock forward. Activate by lengthening, maybe even lifting the knees up for a floating active up dog. Release, shift back, tuck those toes, plant those hands, hug the shoulder blades down, lifting the knees into an active downward dog. Three breaths. Good. Keeping those shoulders back and down, lower your knees, release your toes, and check in. Threading the needle, the left hand comes underneath the nose. The right hand stabilizes by maintaining awareness, as if your hands could see the levelness of your hips. By keeping the hips level, we're allowing the twist to happen in the spine where it's designed to rotate. Hand helps to stabilize, turn the heart towards the right side. You might need to give a squeeze through the inner thighs or a downward press through that right shin. Take another breath here. Good. Same thing, second side, check in, right? Hand plants, left hand to the hips. Lengthen on that inhale, exhaling, squeezing through inner thighs, rotating those left ribs towards the ceiling, perhaps. Take another breath. Good. Now bringing this a little more complicated, perhaps we're gonna add the threading component. So the same thing as we begin, we're gonna twist first, and then with that strong sense of core through our thighs and through our torso, Tuck that top hand under and through. The left arm might extend, the left leg might extend. Did the left hip float up? Can you keep it level? Keeping it level will keep the twist in the spine rather than collapsing through the SI joint. Good, one more breath here. Bring that left arm back and underneath you, the left knee back to the floor, unwind. Use your right hand for additional support or swivel right open onto your left shin, left arm for an exaggerated draping of the supported side plank. Good. Maybe even binding hand to foot behind you again. Look down for more grounding, 
look up for more challenge, more balance, challenge, or simply an energetic invitation to open. Second side, as you come back to table, let's roll out that ankle before we transition to the second side threading. Table, stable, open, and thread. From that thread, do you extend right arm, right leg? And if you really want to complicate things, you can extend opposite leg as well. But really, it's only one at a time. Right? It's hard to extend both legs here and maintain the hovering hips. Release the knee, bring the arm back in as you unwind, swivel all the way open into that supported side plank. And is there room to explore this bind? That's enough just to bring the foot behind you, maybe even bending the knee. If there's room to bind, that's fantastic. We're going to try and keep the knee at hip height or lower. Again, as you unwind, we're going to roll out that foot. All right, stepping that foot all the way forward, we're moving on to a low lunge, comfort in that back leg, knee up or down, lift the arms up, lift the gaze up, squeeze the scissor legs together and breathe. Good hands come down for skandasana, support from the floor, tuck and lift the back leg. Swivel long wise to open up the inner thigh. Good. Moving on to your second side, you can swivel around to the back and build your lunge here. Now, if you're facing the back, we're going to come back around to the front. So, no worries. We're just doing that same. Option to open for the lunge. You rock the Hanuman. So hands come down, support with blocks or all the way to the earth, and extend and bend the knee. Pause with a straight leg and allow the hamstring to enjoy that stretch. The upper underside of your front leg. It's uncomfortable with your back knee, go ahead and sit or even rearrange where your weight is resting. Right. You're gonna walk to the outside, right? Or I guess this maybe is the inside, the inside of your front foot. So whichever foot is in front, you're gonna walk around and swivel the shin to rise up into your gait pose, right? Bowing over that long leg. So now we're bowing towards where we were just rocking that Hanuman. Back up and over to face the front, back to the original front, to rock into cat and cow. 
So your second side leg is gonna step forward, right? Which was originally the first side. And now you're gonna rock that Hanuman. Good, pause for the stretch. Support and adjust, length in the spine, ease in the shoulders, feel that stretch down the underside of your front leg. Walk the hands from the instep around as you swivel your knee, walk up to a stand on that kneeling leg and then a side bend towards the long front leg. Inhale and rise, turn back to face forward. Hands can come to the floor as you find your way to sit. So I'm gonna drag my back leg up Come right down onto my bum to sway my knees. Lowering the spine to the floor, take a knee in and maybe extend the other leg out. Check in on the ankles and the toes. Check in on the hip sway, the swivel. And when all of that feels sorted, draw that knee over to the other side of the body for a twist. Now here, the pelvis may stack, but it may not. So you might like a bolster or a pillow underneath that knee. If the shoulder is up or down, we're just looking to let the body rest. So you might like a higher knee to keep that shoulder down. You might like a lower knee, in which case you want some support under the shoulder. It makes no difference one way or the other, except for how it feels for you. One might feel safer therefore more sustainable or more welcomed by your body's sensations. From this twist, let's unwind and fold right into our figure four. So that top knee is gonna fall open as the bottom leg comes up to catch it and bring the unit into the body. As you release this fold, go ahead and open up the legs to a happy baby. Hands might hold the thighs, the knees, the calves, the ankles, the toes. You might sway, you might extend. Whatever feels good. We're looking essentially to round the low back and to ease the outer buttocks muscles from that pigeon and the low back muscles from that twist. Let's reverse that order and bring the second leg on top for that pigeon pose, that figure four variation. And drop into the stretch by supporting your lower body with the effort perhaps of your arms or the wall underneath that floored foot. The bottom leg will stand and bring the top knee into the chest. Check in on the ankles. You can extend that bottom leg as it's comfortable. And then having checked in to establish a familiarity, an ease, we'll bring that top knee around or over into your twist. Well done. Again, bringing that knee into the belly as you roll back onto your back. Any final movements or shapes 
I'm gonna bring my knees in and take some circles above my sacrum, smoothing out any tension that might be still stuck in that SI joint. But nothing is required. If you're feeling ready to extend and move right into Savasana, then welcome the rest, the ease, the letting go, the allowing. As your rest feels complete, notice once again your breath. We breathe, we move, we rest. It's circular, but not always linear. Sometimes we breathe and we move. We breathe again and we skip right over to rest. Or maybe we breathe and we realize the movement is just ideas in our head or the body receiving the breath. What is your capacity for movement will vary from day to day. But the idea is to give yourself permission to make a simple choice. What's next? Is it a time to breathe, a move, or a rest? So as we complete this practice, take your time. When you come to your seat, Choose another perhaps 10 rounds of that prayer pacing breath, that five and a half count sama mriti, or maybe even anadi shodna, about 10 rounds to begin this journey of circular breathe, move, rest as you re enter the movement of your day. Nadi shodna, support the working hand, the mudra. We'll breathe in through the left side and out through the right. Breathe in through the right side and out to the left. That's one round.
and your 10 rounds are complete. Back to your easeful stillness. Let the movement, the movement of the breath, the movement of your mind's attention witnessing this practice. And the beauty of this practice is that by simply changing one element of our being, one layer of our kosha self, we affect the others. Whether we affect change by way of breathing first or moving first, either way, we will impact the quality of the thoughts and the emotions, the feelings of the brain and vice versa. If we start with the thoughts of the mind, it will affect the body and the energy. And simply choosing one doorway into this house, this being, will help us to shift consciously toward living in alignment, living our best lives. May you breathe deeply, move freely, labor lovingly, and live vibrantly. Namaste.